ukuleleans. Jeff Weinberger coming at you here with a new ukulele tutorial. Today I'd like to talk about a song called Lay Lady Lay by Bob Dylan. Great old 70s tune. And that's kind of the theme of my videos lately. I've been doing a lot of folk music, a lot of acoustic music, and a lot of 70s music. So we'll uh, continue with that theme for a while. What I want to talk about in this tune mostly are bar chords because that's um, probably the biggest obstacle to um, a beginning ukulele player playing a a song like this. Uh, it could be put into the key of C or a similar key that wouldn't require too many bar chords, but Bob Dylan performed this in A, so in order to play along with him, you're going to have to learn a bar chord or two. So let's get into it. Um, the chords are A, 2-1-0-0, C-sharp minor, which is 6-4-4-4. Four, four, four. You've got G, which there's a couple ways to do it. You can do the open version of G, which is 0, 2, 3, 2. Or you can do the bar chord version, which is what I was choosing to do, um, 4, 2, 3, 2. Kind of a little bit easier to get to from C sharp minor. And then we're going to be doing a B minor chord, which is 4, 2, 2, 2. Just a quick word about bars. Uh, I've talked about this in previous videos, but want to make sure you, uh, you catch this. There's... In my school of thought anyway, in the way that I think, there's two ways to go about it. And that's one, where you only bar what's required. You only bar the particular strings that you need to. So for instance, on a C-sharp minor chord, which again was 6-4-4-4, four, 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 you bar only the C string, the E string, and the A string. And you only expend as much energy as it takes to hold those strings down. Uh, you don't have to squeeze really, really hard to get them. You can uh, let up from where you might think uh, you have to press down. Sometimes people overcompensate, and they actually hurt themselves. You know, they kind of strain their tendons and ligaments and muscles uh, trying to do these bar chords. But really, it just takes a kind of a pretty light squeeze to, to get that going. So that's one tip for you. Just cover the strings necessary, and then don't press down any harder than is necessary. There's another school of thought, though, that says that um, you should bar all four strings. You should overlap the neck and have your first finger sticking out up above the neck like this. And um, even though you don't need to bar the G string, you can include that in your bar. And that, um, for a lot of people, that makes life easier. I do do that on occasion. It really depends on the situation. Like, for instance, a B-flat chord. A lot of people um, only bar two strings on their B-flat, the E and A strings, but you can bar all four if you want. It won't affect the sound of the chord at all. It just affects how it feels to, to bar it. So totally up to you. But I just wanted to get in a quick uh, word there about bar chords. I know there's a lot to say about them, but this is probably above and beyond the scope of this video. I just wanted to impart that one little tip about either barring the bare minimum strings or barring all four all the time, no matter what the the bar chord is. All right, getting on with the tune. Um, that's a repeating four chord, chord progression that happens over and over in the song, in the intro, the verse, and other parts of the song. A to C sharp minor, G to B minor. It's kind of two pairs of chords. So A and C sharp minor. Here I am over barring the, the C sharp minor. And then G to B minor is another pair of chords. And then you put those four chords together and you get the famous. So that's the bulk of the song using those four chords. And then there's a little bit of what you might call a bridge. It's not exactly a chorus. Um, because it doesn't repeat the same way every time, so it can't really qualify as a, a chorus, but we could call it a bridge. Uh, this is one of those songs that kind of has two different bridges. Um, not too many of those in rock music. I can tell you another one, which is I'll Be Back by the Beatles, which I'll be doing a tutorial on in the future. One of my favorite, all-time favorite Beatles songs, I'll Be Back. So check that one out if you can. But that has two different distinct bridges. This song does too. First bridge goes E for two beats. F sharp minor for two beats. And an E was four 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 two. F sharp minor was two one two zero. And then we return back to the original chord progression. Bulk 
of the song is made of those four chords. Quick tip about A, if you don't want to do A as an open chord and have to go all the way up here to do C sharp minor as a bar chord, you could do A as a bar chord too. So you would have A as um, a bar chord being 6, 4, 5, 4. C sharp minor is right there. You just lift a f your second finger. G is back there just like A, except it's 4, 2, 3, 2. And lift your second finger to get B minor. That's a really slick way to do it. That's very similar to how Dylan does it with bar chords on his guitar. Kind of has a nice smooth sound because of the voice leading, because of the notes in the chord moving smoothly to the notes of the next chord. So that's, uh, I highly suggest doing it that way too. I just happen to, I like that open A too, so you'll see me do it both ways. There's the second bridge. That part is uh, C sharp minor to E. That's a chord change that might take you a little bit of practice. C sharp minor to E within two beats of each other. And then the A chord. This is a little lick on the A chord. Every time they hold A for uh, a full measure, they, there's a pedal steel guitar, a great Nashville pedal steel guitar in this song, um, and it plays this little lick. That's D to C sharp. So I do that while playing the A chord. I hold my A chord down and then my third finger gets that, that D note for the lick. Uh, that could be played up, up higher too if you want. like a pedal steel up high there. Here's what I'm doing there. I'm playing only three strings and I'm playing four, five, four. That makes a little A chord. And then adding my pinky to the fifth fret, four, five, five, and then bringing it back to the fourth fret for the little pedal steel lick. So here's what it would sound like with the higher A chord. So either way, or whichever you want. Um, after that, we have a new chord that, um, well, it's not a new chord, but it's used in a new context. We drop down from C sharp minor down to B minor for four full beats a piece. So that was... Um, da, 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 da. thing you have left to learn is the outro which is just um, it's picked he picks it on his guitar but it goes something like this so you have an A chord for two beats a B minor chord for two beats a C sharp minor chord for two beats a D chord for two beats and end on A very typical Dylan chord progression, climbing up the chords of, of a key, in this case the key of A. He did something very similar in uh, Like a Rolling Stone in the key of C. Once upon a time. Didn't you? But we'll get into that later. That uh, just climbing up the chords of, of the key. So in this case, A, B minor, C sharp minor to D and end on A. That D that I did, um, if you don't want to do a conventional D, back here at the second fret, you could do D as a bar chord, and that was seven, six, five, five. So you have A, B minor, C sharp minor, this new D chord, and end on A like that, A like this, A like this, however you know your, your A chord any inversion that you have. All right, ukulele people, that's about all the chords in the song. Now we're gonna have to just talk very briefly about the strum, which goes like this. So what am I 
doing there? Down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. I throw in all kinds of variations and little embellishments just to amuse myself, but the basic strum, if you had to break it down to a basic strum, is down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down. That's a quarter note and four sixteenths for those of you keeping score at home. Down, down, up, down, up, down, down. Here it is applied to the four chord chord progression that makes up the bulk of this tune. On the B minor, I like to do this. Down, up, down, up, up, down. Down, up, down, up, up, down. Very related to uh, the Calypso strum, actually. So that's just something. I don't know if I'm hearing that in the song or if I just throw that in as a habit, but I like to throw that at the uh, end of the strum. people. A great 70s song from the classic era of rock with a little bit of country thrown in there too. I hope you like this video. Be sure to subscribe. Be sure to click like. Be sure to click the notify bell and visit my Patreon page where I will provide a song sheet of this with all the chords diagrammed out for you and the order of the song, the form. If you want to see a song sheet with lyrics, I will link to one. There's a couple of good ones out there that I'll just provide a link to. And I always link to the YouTube video that you can listen to the original recording on so you can hear Dylan performing this on his album National Skyline. All right, ukulele people, you take care, and I will catch you later. Bye-bye.